Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, I believe I have 20 minutes remaining. Is that correct? The Senator from Idaho has 17 and a half minutes remaining. All right. I, I'd ask if the President would uh, notify me when I have about two minutes remaining. The Chair will notify you. Mr. President, later today we're going to vote on my motion to refer the bill to the Finance Committee and have the Finance Committee simply make the bill comply with the President's promise with regard to taxes. As I've said a number of times on the floor, this bill does not correct so many of the problems that we need to deal with in health care. It drives up the cost of health care and premiums, not down. It raises hundreds of billions of dollars in taxes. It cuts Medicare by hundreds of billions of dollars. It grows the federal government by over two and a half trillion dollars in the first 10 years of full implementation. It forces the needy uninsured not into, gets, does not give them an access toward insurance. It, gives, it forces them into a failing Medicaid system, imposes a damaging unfunded mandate on our struggling states, still leaves millions of Americans uninsured, and establishes a massive government control over our health care. And even, frankly, if the so-called government option or the government health care insurance company that's created by the bill were to be removed, there would still be massive government intrusion into the control and manage management of our health care system. Well, as we, went, as we were facing the prospect of dealing with this bill, the President made a pledge to the American people. And in his terms, the pledge was, I can make a firm pledge, no family making less than $250,000 will see their taxes increase. Not their income taxes, not your payroll taxes, not your capital gains taxes, not any of your taxes. You will not see any of your taxes increase one single dime. And yet what we have in this legislation is a whole array of new taxes, about $493 billion in new taxes to start with. And that's assuming that you just start with the beginning of the bill and go for the first 10 years. If you actually compare the number of taxes that will be charged by this bill to the American people with that first full 10-year of implementation period, that's $1.28 trillion in new taxes. Now, this chart shows taxes and fees, not just the specific taxes. But taxes and fees, fees which our Congressional Budget Office and our Joint Tax Committee have said repeatedly will be passed on to the American consumer. And yet the President said that nobody's taxes will be increased. Let's see the next chart. We've had further analysis of just four of the major tax provisions in the bill, and there are many more. But if you just look at the four major tax provisions in the bill, the Joint Committee on Taxation has said that by 2019, at least 73 million American households earning below $200,000 will face a tax increase. And when you break these numbers down further, it's just not, the pe not just the people making between one and $200,000 or the upper income earners, but massive tax increases falling upon people who are making well under $100,000 a year. Now, the response has been, well, wait a minute. This bill also has some tax cuts in it, and when you offset the tax cuts against the tax increases, there's more tax cuts than there are tax increases. I dispute that in a couple of ways. First of all, even if you accept the fact that there are tax cuts in this bill, which is arguable, and I'll point that out in a minute, they don't offset all the taxes and fees. So it's still a net increase in taxes. But there is a subsidy in this bill to provide insurance to a, a group of Americans who do not have the financial capacity today to purchase their own insurance. As I mentioned earlier, the neediest of this group did not get access to insurance. They got put on Medicaid. But some in America will get some access to insurance, and that subsidy will be provided by the federal government. And the other side is saying that that's a tax cut. Well, I disagree with that for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's called in the bill a refundable tax credit, and it is administered by the Internal Revenue Service, which, by the way, the Internal Revenue Service is going to need to grow by 40 to 50 percent in order to accommodate these new roles in managing the health care system. But it's a refundable tax credit 
in only the way that Congress could put it together. It's nothing other than a government payment to individuals, most of whom pay no taxes. In fact, between 2014 and 2019, 73 percent of the people receiving the subsidy, or $288 billion of the subsidy, goes to taxpayers who pay no taxes. Now, you can call that a tax cut if you want, but CBO, our Congressional Budget Office, doesn't call it a tax cut. The Congressional Budget Office scores it as federal spending, as exactly what it is, spending by the federal government. It's a subsidy being provided by the federal government. And you can argue about whether it should be provided or not, but to call it a tax cut is a stretch. Well, even if you accept that that is a tax cut, there are still 42 million American households earning below $200,000 a year who will pay more taxes. And the bottom line here is no matter how you cut it and no matter how you define tax cut, the reality is that this bill imposes hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars of new taxes squarely on the middle class in violation of the president's promise that nobody in America, in order to fund this bill, who makes less than $250,000 as a family or $200,000 as an individual, would be required to pay more taxes. Now, again, some of those who are, have responded to this have said that, that uh, you know, this is our opportunity, and if we support this amendment, we will be killing a bill that provides tax relief to the American people. Again, as I have pointed out, the amendment does not do anything to the subsidy that is called a tax cut. The amendment leaves the subsidy in place. So it's simply wrong to say that the amendment, or the motion that I have asked to, to have passed, would do anything to remove this so-called tax relief, or properly called subsidy, from the bill. What my motion does is simply to say that the bill should be referred to the Finance Committee so the Finance Committee can make sure that it complies with the President's pledge that it does not raise taxes on those who are in what the President has described as the middle class. Very simple and straightforward. And if there are no such taxes, then the motion is irrelevant. But we all know there are. Joint tax, the Congressional Budget Office, many private organizations have squarely pointed it out. In fact, we're still studying it. And if we get past the first four big taxes in the bill, these numbers that I've talked about, the 42 million net or the 73 million in reality in America, and those are households, not individuals, who will be paying more taxes, are squarely going to be hit by this bill. Let me give you a different perspective on it. If you take all of those who are supposedly getting tax relief, but are really getting a direct subsidy, accept the fact that this is truly a tax cut, they represent 7% of the American public. The rest of the American public does not get a subsidy. The rest of the American public pays the taxes for the establishment of a huge $2.5 trillion new entitlement program that will bring that much more of the federal government into control of the health care economy. We are just coming back now from a two-and-a-half-hour break because the Democrats were over at the White House meeting with the President. We don't know what was said there. There was apparently the negotiation uh, behind closed doors yet once again of some other new changes to the legislation, some other new portions of the bill. Uh, no C-SPAN cameras were there, to my knowledge. But we now have an opportunity to talk about what will happen in the next few hours with regard to this amendment. The President could have asked his, his friends in the, in the Democratic caucus to support this amendment, which simply requires that the bill comply with his pledge. I hope that he did, and I hope it can be accepted. But the true reality here is that this legislation violates not only this pledge, but a number of the President's other pledges. For example, the pledge that if you like what you have, you can keep it. Americans all over this country have heard that pledge repeated a number of times. Well, if you're one of the employees 
who has employer-provided insurance and that insurance happens to fit in the, the uh, so-called higher cost insurance packages that are taxed 45% by this plan, you're not going to get to keep it. Both CBO and Joint Tax have made it very clear that you are going to see your health care cut by your employer in order to avoid this tax. And then what's going to happen is your employer might, probably will, give you a little bit more wages to compensate for the cut in your employment benefits, your net package of compensation won't change in value, but you'll get a little more of it in wages and a little less of it in health care. But the kicker is that the wage portion is taxed and the health care portion is not, so your taxes are going to go up and your net compensation package is going to go down. You're going to have a less robust health care plan and you're going to have a lower overall compensation package. Now, does that comply with the president's promise that if you like what you have, you can keep it? Or what about the millions, the 11 million Americans, I believe it is, who have Medicare Advantage policies today, who clearly are going to lose about half of their extra Medicare Advantage benefits under the Medicare cuts in the bill? If they like what they have, can they keep it? No. So, Mr. President, what I'm asking here is simply that the Senate vote to require that the president's pledge in this one case be honored. Namely, let's send the bill to the Finance Committee. It can be turned around in the Finance Committee overnight. Take out the provisions that impose taxes on people in America earning less than $250,000 as a family or $200,000 as an individual and bring it back to the floor. Now, you'll hear it said that this is a killing amendment, that it will kill the bill. It won't kill the bill unless it's necessary in the bill to tax Americans to the tune of the hundreds of billions of dollars that are included in this bill. What it will do is expose that this bill cannot be claimed to be deficit neutral or to even reduce the deficit unless three things happen. The Medicare cuts of hundreds of billions of dollars are imposed. The tax increases of hundreds of billions of dollars are imposed, and the budget gimmicks are implemented. Let me talk, tell you about the most significant of those budget gimmicks. In order to make it so they could say that this bill doesn't increase taxes or doesn't increase the deficit, the crafters of the bill have had the taxes go into effect on day one, the Medicare cuts go into effect on day one, but the subsidy program or the spending part of the bill is delayed for four years. So we have 10 years of revenue and six years of spending. And I personally think that the way they picked 2014 to be the year in which they impact, in which they implement the spending part of the bill is they just said, how many years do we have to delay the spending impact until we can claim that there's a deficit neutral bill? Turned out they had to delay it for four years out of the 10. If it took five, they'd have delayed it five years. Now, that's a budget gimmick. The reality is we all know that if you had the spending go into place on day one and the taxes go into place on day one and the Medicare cuts go into place on day one and took the gimmicks out, that this bill would generate a deficit, another promise that the president pledged not to do. There are so many problems with this bill, but most importantly today, as we will have an opportunity around 6 o'clock, is to vote to at least have the bill comply with the president's pledge.